What up, what up, what up, you guys? It's Blackwing2040. Welcome back to the Power Rangers Marathon. Today, we have made it to the 15th season, the 15th anniversary season of Power Rangers, Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. And before I go on with the season, this season gets, I would say, you know, it does get a lot of hate for many reasons. And trust me, there are, I have only watched the season just, you know, only three times. And I never understood why the season got a lot of hate. I mean, watching it, you know, full through for, you know, three times, and I'm realizing, like, okay, I can see where people are getting upset at. Because, you know, watching it for the first time, I thought it was, you know, cool. And plus, you know, it's the 15, Power Rangers has been around for 15 years at that time, and I thought it was, you know, great. And, of course, and re, you know, seeing any things, I mean, they had, like, a few nods to past seasons, but not enough. So, for an anniversary season, it doesn't really get the job done, and I understand why people are, you know, are upset about that, but it's not all that bad. Heck, it's not bad of what comes later on in the future. Trust me, it isn't that bad. But anyway, first off, let's talk about these suits. These gotta be the most cleanest suits I've ever seen. On these rangers like really these suits are just clean from the the white and the sh um the silver shoulder pads and the silver anklets and anklets and the wrist guards it's just they're really like some clean looking suits especially for the helmets too so i don't really literally these are like one of one of my favorite suit designs one of my favorites all right so let's get down to this story so the story of Operation Overdrive is begins with two brothers, Flurius and Moltor, who seek to steal the crown called the Corona Aurora. For now, let's just go with his other name, the Crown of the Gods. <laughs> the Crown of the Gods. So they seek to steal the crown, but instead, when they try to steal it, they are cursed with new forms for themselves and they get transported to separate planets based on their specific elements. Lurius gets the element of ice, and Moltor gets the element of fire. The crown's guardian, the Sentinel Knight, decides to send the jewels of the crown on Earth and spread them out and also hide the crown somewhere. Now, present day, an explorer named Andrew Hartford finds the crown, but upon him finding the crown, he accidentally frees Moltor and Flurius on their specific element planets that they're on. So both brothers travel to Earth to find the crown and the jewels. So Andrew Hartford decides to put a team together of four specialists. Ronnie, our future Yellow Ranger, who is a race car driver, race car driver. Will, Will, who is a spy for hire. Rose, who is a genius at robotics and just all knowledge. And Dax, who is a stuntman. And together, he brings them together to form Operation Overdrive, and they, be they become Power Rangers. And later on, we get introduced to Andrew's son, Mac, who isn't really much of a special, but he does dream of, you know, the thrill of adventure. And that's, of course, the main theme of the show. The main theme, of course, is basically, it's basically Power Rangers with meets Indiana Jones. And I didn't really get that at the time, because looking at the Zords that they had this season, I thought it was just like, you know... Power Rangers mixed with construction vehicles. I'm like, how does construction vehicles coincide with the theme? But hey, the more you research, the more you find out what, what it is. So anyway, Andrew has been, you know, basically forbid Mac to, you know, become a Ranger, but Mac decided on his own will to, you know, help out the other Rangers at, at all costs. So Moltor was able to get the crown, and so as the show progresses, we get introduced to a basically a different array of villains. And the thing is about these villains, these villains don't work together. They all have the same goal, but they all hate each other. Flurius is after the crown, he's trying to get it before his brother Moltor, and you also have other forces with Camdor and Meritrix, who are two ninja warriors after the crown, and you also have the Fear Cats, who are after the crown. And I'll dive deeper into those um, individuals when I get to when I start talking about characters. But overall, I could say with this season, the story does move really progresses very very well. Like once 
one episode ends and coincides it begins starts right up with the next one so it does keep you know it does keep itself moving forward over and over and over it doesn't drag at all i would say so that's a positive i can say about this now as for this for the you know when it comes to like focus episodes some characters get more focus than others that's basically what i could say some characters get more focus than others not everyone gets you know character development and you know it just feels like some of them are just there but it's like i said the story does you know the story is the key defining point of the season all right so let's move on with talking about these characters starting off with our red ranger mac now of course the big twist of this season was that mac was an android <laughs> trust me the first time i ever saw that i was like what is happening <laughs> of course yeah, younger me would have of course now i kind of realized that you know it's a good twist it's a good twist we never would expect you know a an android ranger for that fact but i think adding it to the story was pretty decent now Mac is not that bad of a ranger. He really is not that bad of a ranger. When it comes to leading the team and making, you know, you know, rules and everything, he is on it. Like he know always tells the rangers to split up. He's always motivating the team. He's always, you know, has a thrill for adventure and everything. He is not a bad red ranger. He is not as bad as everybody think he is. Trust me, he isn't. And as a character, of course, when he's revealed to be an android, he goes through a big identity crisis. My only nitpick about Mac is that he tends to drive the guilt to his father's face close to the end of the show. And that's kind of what annoyed me a bit. But it's just a little nitpick. But overall, Mac is not that bad of a character. He really isn't. Alright, let's move on to Will, our Black Ranger. And of course, he's a brother. A brother in black. We haven't had a brother in black since the OG season, Zach, but anyway, Will, he starts off as very cocky, he's a ladies man, suave kind of dude, and he prefers to work alone, and I kind of like, I wish they kind of, well, they couldn't really do this, because his Sentai counterpart was basically someone who wanted to surpass the leader, Will wasn't that kind of person, he's more so like I said, he's a solo act. He was like, you know, I work alone. His attitude, it's just his attitude that kind of gets me a little bit. And his cockiness. I just, that's just one of the things that really, that really kind of bugs me about Will. Other than that, I do like his drive to, you know, you know, fix his past mistakes. For instance, when he lost one of the jewels to Camdor. And ever since then, well, since then, he's always been running into Camdor from the beginning of his, you know, appearance to his, to Camdor's last appearance in the show. So I will give a pass to that. But other than that, Will is mixed. I have, it's mixed opinion about Will. All right, next character is Dax. <laughs> Dax, Dax, Dax. Dax is what you call... I would say a loose cannon, but someone who's extremely energetic, but again, just doesn't know what to do. Dax is one of those characters, he's basically, he says stuff at the random moments, and it's just, you know, nothing. There's an episode where he, you know, where Meritrex makes her debut, he he's basically, date, she, she becomes Dax's girlfriend. I mean, yeah, she becomes Dax's girlfriend, and, you know, once she reveals her true motives, she takes what she's looking for and then walks away, and Dax just let, lets her go because he feels broken that he never knew that this person, that Meritrix was a villain, and, but again, there's nothing really to say about Dax, that's, there's no focus episode that's just probably that one focus episode, and that's it. He doesn't get anything else. That's, I really, there's nothing else to say about Dax. I know he's not a fan favorite. Trust me, the fandom really hates Dax, because every time he talks, everyone's always saying, shut up, Dax. I mean, me, I've gotten used to it. Dax, he's not that annoying, but 
like he doesn't have no purpose really that's the sad thing all right next is ronnie ronnie is someone who likes to live life on the edge especially since she's a race car driver and you know she has that she has a little bit of cockiness but she does become you know more confident and more humble of herself to you know help out the team and again focus episodes like i said only one as far as like diving deep into her character just one but other than that that's about it there's nothing else to really say about ronnie guys i'm sorry i'm really sorry all right our next ranger is rose rose of course i can also say she's also one of the best members of the team because she's smart she gathers research for them whenever they're trying to find specific information on an artifact and she's very you know closed like she doesn't like to let people in but there's an episode where Tyson always you know kept asking questions about her and he always wanted to get to know her better because she felt that her her smarts was was kind of like a curse because with her being so smart felt like she didn't really need friends but here as the show develops she realized you know her friends you know admire her her knowledge skill set and that's that's a blessing to be appreciate to appreciate to be honest but yeah rose is not that bad she's really one of the best members of the team and all before i move on to talking about Tyson. The Rangers are also given specific powers through their DNA being reconfigured. For instance, Mac gets super strength, Will gets a hand, enhance um, sight and hearing, Ronnie gets super speed, Dax, he can jump high, and Rose can turn invis invisible. Those are the only Rangers that have, you know, their, their DNA gets repressed. Now for Tizon, Tizon, he's an alien from the planet Mercuria, He's also made his whole body is made out of mercury, hence why he's called the Mercury Ranger. And I kind of like that, kind of like that name. Um, Tizon basically comes to Earth, you know, ser searching for the Fearcast, and he also runs into Moltor. Moltor turns him into a monster, but the Rangers help him out by changing back into his, you know, his human humanized form. And I would say. One thing that bugs me about Tizon is when he's encountering one of the fair cats and one of the fair cats tricks him thinking he's on his home planet. There's a, there's a bit that bothers me where he says, like, I remember, I guess I never was a Power Ranger. I'm like, dude, after all you've been through with the Rangers, what are you doing? Have you forgotten what you were doing? Seriously, because this particular fair cat was disguised as his fiance named Vela, and I'm gonna get to Vela uh, real soon. But I would say Tizon brings out a lot of moments to, you know, get to basically finds moments to bring the Rangers out of their comfort zone. He kind of pushes them to become better, and I I really do like the episode where he does decide to, you know get to know rose a little bit more and it's basically a way of how he helped her to open up to people so that's one props i can give to tyson all right next characters well cap yeah, actually next characters of course the legendary rangers we had a big two-part episode team up called once a ranger you had five past rangers come back adam bridge kira tori and xander and once a ranger as it's like i said as a team up it's cool that the legendary rangers came back but there wasn't much interaction with you know the overdrive rangers because in that team up the rangers got their powers taken away by the son of rita and zed thrax i'm going to talk about thrax when i get to him but i just wish that these past rangers kind of help talk you know Give them a pep talk or something. Yes, the Rangers don't have any powers, and they just feel like, okay, since the legendary Rangers are replacing us, there's no point of us being here. And that's another thing that another thing that kind of bothered me about this season. These Rangers gave up too easily, and I don't like that. I don't like a team of Rangers that gives up too easily. That kind of takes the joy out of everything. But if they do end up getting their powers back later on in the team up. Of course, there's a big epic morph, cool fight scene and everything, but overall, the team up 
was it could have been better. It really could have been better. But it was still cool to see all these past Rangers come back, especially Adam. We haven't seen him since in space, but it was still cool to see Adam again. All right, on to the other characters. Let's start off with Andrew Hartford, who is the mentor of the team. There's there were moments. Trust me, there were moments in the show where it was they were hinting on why he was so worried about Mac. Cause trust me, he was he always kept saying, "I'm worried about Mac." Over and over and over again. And you never knew. But the more times you watch this season. You realize they were setting up hints about Max. You know big reveal that he's an android. Right. I could say right from the beginning. But there was a specific episode where he says. Spencer has been around a long time. Mac has been only been around for two years. That's your clue. To say that like two years i thought he's your son he should have been around you know all your life and everything but hey andrew isn't like you know he isn't the best mentor i mean he does what he can he gives the rangers information that he that they need and that's just about it that's all i can say about andrew now spencer on the other hand spencer why I always wonder why is it butlers are always the best characters at giving advice? You have Alfred from Batman, you have Jeffrey from Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you have Niles from the Nanny, and now you have Spencer. Spencer is what you call a phenomenal character. Whenever the Rangers feel like they're down on their luck, Spencer is always the one to pick them that pick them back up. And he's also um, a master of disguise because there's moments in the season where he just kind of takes a fake, you know, plastic mask off his face and it just reveals like, hey, I'm just helping you guys out. You know, I'm undercover. <laughs> but Spencer, he's a really great character. Really, he really is. And I just, I don't understand why they always do that with Butler characters. But anyway, on to the next character, the Sentinel Knight. Now, of course, like I said, the Sentinel Knight is the guardian of the Crown of the Gods. He does get it, end up getting his body reformed when the Rangers find the sword Excelsior, and he becomes more of like an extra, you know, like an ally to the Rangers. And he has two forms, and he's also able to, com you know, fuse with Mac to become the Red Sentinel Ranger. Hence, this is also like the last battleizer we see for a while. <laughs> And it kind of sucks that we never get one in Jungle Fury, but anyway, I'm jumping ahead. Sentinel Knight, he only pops up just about a few moments in the beginning, and then in the team up, and then once he get his his form his you know his form back, he helps the Rangers out from time to time to time. He also used the crown to uh, to change Mac from an android to giving him you know a human heart. And that's basically his purpose throughout the show. That's basically it. Alright. I wasn't going to talk about this character, but I have him down here anyway. Uh, Norg. Norg is Flurius's Yeti assistant. Because here's the crazy thing. Flurius ends up finding a cave in the north. Norg is already living there. And Flurius just ends up like, you. You're my helper. And that's about it. But, of course, Norg isn't all that evil. He just wants to be, you know, appreciated. But, of course, his only true moment where he feels appreciated is when he rescues um, Vela from a dozen chillers, fighting them off. And also, to note, he's also played by Power Rangers legend Kels... Kel ah, I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. I his first name starts with Kelson. I am so sorry, guys. So sorry. But anyway... Um, like, he does so many things in the Power Rangers franchise. It's amazing. But anyway, that's all Norg is good for. But like I said, he's not all that evil. He really isn't. All right, now, Vela. Vela is Tizon's fiance. They were, de they were going to get married until she got kidnapped by the Fear Cats. And then when Tizon encounters one of the Fear Cats who captured her, she ends up in the hands of Moltor. I'm like, wait a minute. The Fear Cats were had um Vela. How did she end up in the hands of Moltor? That's the only thing I never understood. But eh, what I what what can you do? Plot holes. That's all I can say. And of course, she's very caring, dear 
to, you know, Tyson's heart and everything. But she's only around for, like, really just two episodes. That's about it. Alright, now let's move on to these villains. First villain, Flurious. Flurious, his, his rivalry with Moltor throughout the show is the driving point, is the defining point of the show, of his character, if I would say. But as a villain, I mean, I don't really, I don't really like him that much. I really don't. He's not, he's not, he really isn't, he doesn't tolerate failure, of course not. I mean, what villain to tolerates failure? And he hates to lose. But, like I said, all these villains have one similar goal. They just want the crown. And that's mainly Flurious' goal. Mainly his crown, his jewel, his goal is to get the crown before his brother and the others. That's just about it. Now, Moltor. Moltor is actually one of the villains I like. Because, one, his design. And two, I just, he's the one that fights the Rangers way more than Flurious does. He fights a, Moltor does more work than Flurious, and that's saying something. And I kind of like he throughout the sh um the show, the villains kind of form temporary alliances. But I feel like Moltor put more work in than Flurious did, and I that's kind of crazy if I might add. All right, next up, I'm talking about Camdor. And Meritrix. I'm talking about them both. Now, of course, nothing is really said about their backstory, which is crazy. But one thing I can say, as the show progressed, I like how Camdor is starting to, you know, ignore Meritrix because he kind of finds her as a bit of a loose end. And then when Meritrix is getting sick and tired of it, she tries to, you know, overthrow him by getting more power. And that ends up leading to her downfall. So, that's one thing. Now, Camdor, Camdor, he is one fierce foe. Really fierce. Especially with his rivalry that he has with Will throughout the show. And kind of, you know, the smack talk he gives Will and everything. But Camdor is definitely he's a force to be reckoned with. Seriously. Alright, next up, the Fear Cats. Now, these guys gave... Every single character in the show a run for their money. Now, mind you, there's like four fear cats. You have Migs and Bengalo, who become the main focal, you know, fear cats throughout the show. And you also have Cheetar and Krazar. Now, of course, Migs and Bengalo are the ones that stick around the longest. But boy, anytime one of the villains found something, the fear cats are like right behind it. We like, we got it. Ha <laughs> ha. See you later, suckers. Now. I love the Fear Cats. I have to say, I actually really do love the Fear Cats. They're like the most fierce, and they're the most, they're the most really just snobbish villains in the entire show. Like, they want to get everything first, and pretty much, they do tend to get everything first. They tend to get, you know, the relics before the other villains, and before the rangers do, and they're just awesome. But I also love, you know... The uh, Cybertech armor that Migs and Bengalo have. And, like I said, they're really cool characters. Really, they're cool. And the last character to talk about is Thrax. The son of Rita and Zed. We get no explanation of where he came from besides that Rita and Zed is his parents. But again, we just know that he fought the Sentinel, Sentinel Knight years ago. But again, it's just bad continuity and plot holes. It's just Rita and Zed turned good after in space. And he's saying he fought, you know, the Sentinel Knight years before. But I'm like, when did you find the time to do all of this? Just when? But I will say, as far as, you know, for originality goes, you know, he has Lord Zed's, you know, Z staff and everything. His design is different from his parents but I mean if anything I feel like Thrax should have been the main villain of the show if they done that would have been a perfect way to commemorate you know the entire franchise franchise for being around for 15 years that would that would have been perfect instead of just having him around just for two episodes but anyway those are all the characters as far as my rating go for for overdrive 
the season, like I said, it's it has its moments, but it's not all that bad. It's not trash. It's mid. Overdrive is very, very mid, if I would say. So, anyway, guys, that's my review for Operation Overdrive. In the comment section below, what did you guys think of Operation Overdrive? Who was your favorite character? Who, who was your favorite ranger? And what was your opinion on the Once a Ranger team up? Let me know in the comment section below. But, of course, the next Ranger season review is going to be on Power Rangers Jungle Fury. A very underrated season, if I might add. And some people also, this season also tends to get hate which i don't understand why but anyway keep your eye out for that review don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video and click that bell to be notified and as always i am vengeance i am darkness i am blackwing stay golden and may the power protect you